You're listening to The Right Club Podcast, where the focus is all about helping you grow your real estate investment portfolio and live the life you want to live. Come grow with us and join our community at therightclub.com. And now your hosts, Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi. Yeah, we just went where the opportunities are. And the same applied to our lives. I mean, that's why we moved around a lot. We used to live in Southern Ontario. We moved where the jobs were. So when we came out of college, you guys were fortunate. You didn't really know that era, but 2001, 2002, there were no jobs. It was really hard. Unemployment was really high. Like London, Hamilton was very poor, 10, 11% unemployment. That was normal. We mm -hmm. were fighting for minimum wage jobs. If you were late one minute, you were fired. It's a whole different era now. Like we're, uh, you guys are millennials, but we're like just like just 1980. <laughs> so 80, 81 is when the millennials begin. So we're like Gen X, depending on some books, are millennials. And it really shaped us like a, a work ethic. Mm -hmm. And something now we see people applying, like I've, I've been in charge of uh, a lot of groups and people, employees, and you see them super laid back. Oh yeah, no worries. And you get very few resumes. But back then you were fun fighting like hundreds of people for one mm -hmm. job and uh, yeah so it really shaped us and what we had to do and that's why we're not afraid of of going where the opportunity is and not staying home I, home is wherever you are so yeah yeah that, that's funny you say that i've heard that you know obviously the late 70s people born in that 75 or or later is like the gen x that you know like that old school but know how to use a smartphone Right. Yeah. Just, you know, I remember when they came out, I wanted my Blackberry in 2004. Yeah, I was selling high end furniture and I'm like, I need a Blackberry for my British clients because they come and talk on Skype, which was brand new. And now it's like super old and no one uses Skype. But anyway, <laughs> Zoom, yeah, Zoom yeah. definitely ate Skype's lunch. That's for sure. But even Zoom, I mean, people are all about Zoom. I was using Zoom years ago and then I'm like, what's what's with this? Like Zoom is old. People are starting to use that. But anyway i guess it works it's taken over and i think that is something about that that generation or that period of time whether you know you're in, from ontario or you in other parts of the world there was we weren't as connected maybe as we were like you'd watch yeah. the six o'clock news and that was the information that was discerned right and everybody could take their opinion but now our own information is is translated differently for the way that we view it right and, yeah. and you guys just have that that I don't know what that spirit is, but it is, you know, it is something representative in the right club of, you know, it's okay. We'll get past this. Yeah. There was 10% unemployment and we got past that too. And we're going to, you know, we, we were talking just off air that there was a certain percentage of, of vacant units and, you know, we're getting past that too. It gives us time to reno and bring in new things and try new systems. Right. So that's that spirit that, you know, you continue to, to, to fall through. And now you have with your kids in the business as well too. Like, do they take some interest to it as well? Do they talk about like cash flow and those types of things? Or is it like, we just, let's do the social media, you know, mom put a <laughs> smile or let's put some, let's get some branding. Like how, how, like what's, what's your goal? Like now that you've, you've kind of amassed some, you know, success in, in, in different ways of bringing these on. What are the goals that legacies that you want to kind of bring on for your kids or maybe beyond that, right? And obviously helping your partners and joint venture uh, uh, investors as well. Yeah, well, I think it's super important to show the kids uh, that hard work pays off and that it's really important. I mean, that's something that we've always done. I mean, we opened our cottage that we have with partners on the weekend and we cleaned up mouse crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jennifer's like, I'm not paid enough like, for this. Live in the dream. <laughs> live in the dream. We're picking but, up. They even eat Irish soap, believe it or not. Yeah, so. everyone told us that this big trick was to put Irish spring soap in the cottage. Those mouse just went to town on that soap. <laughs> My single yeah. cottages are, are bad. Like even like our cottage too, we'll we'll set mouse traps and like once in a while we we get them. I mean, I don't I don't know what it is, but like I don't know where they come from. There's it's nothing to somewhere. eat. I'm like, there's nothing to eat here. Nothing. But anyway, um, our son is super into like the whole idea of like um, investing, investing, cash flow. I think he's totally got it now. He's almost 18, so I think that he kind of gets the Very idea cool. like, oh, I can do this pretty soon myself. Our daughter's more the let's do a reel and let's do a yeah, TikTok. TikTok and stuff <laughs> and she doesn't realize it all yet but we yeah. were having this conversation just a few minutes ago I'm like well I guess when we're 60 we'll just liquidate everything and you can live in a box but that'll be your choice <laughs> <laughs> and that is good say, yeah that's that's me <laughs> I left we left home at 18 and we never went back thank goodness 
And yeah, that's kind of, I don't want to kick my kids out, but when they're like early 20s, you'd better be moving because that's how you, it's like <laughs> a bird. You have to kick them out of the nest. If not, they never learn how to fly. So yeah, it's been. If you make it too comfortable, they don't leave. Like my, my brother, who's two years younger, still lives at home. Yeah. Oh no, the and house will start shrinking. It's already. Not because he can't afford it, just comfort. It's nuts. Okay, so so here's one of the things I want to I want to do because you guys are very open. You know, oh, you yeah. got you got tons of property, lots of experience. Shit happens. Let's talk about the shit that happens. <laughs> Let's share some <laughs> yeah. stuff that can happen in real estate investing. So you know, maybe you should share some of the stories that you've experienced in your your crazy. I would say 18 months of of you know acquisitions and acquisitions. Um, what are some things that you can share with us that maybe the, uh, the right club community would be, uh, horrified to, uh, to hear? <laughs> Jennifer, we should sure talk about thoughts. today. Uh oh, a <laughs> new story. Yes. New story. So <laughs> today we're just reflecting. Jennifer had a day off <laughs> from work and we're just reflecting, looking at our bank accounts and we have to pay this bill and that bill. And she's like, yeah. I don't know how much I enjoy this anymore, but I mean, there's always ups and downs. You need a mm -hmm. strong why to make sure you're, you stay focused and connected. But for the past, since June last year, so how long? About nine months, we've really been supporting our properties. So paying this, paying that, pay, 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 and there's never money coming in. It's always money coming out uh, to the tune of like, what? Uh -huh. Yeah, I would say about, well, 40,000 last year, but I think that um, we, we found the, what the problem was yes. and we fixed it. It just took time and the problem was property management, but we had to go through two, cop two bad property management companies to learn that really bad lesson. Um, Cost us 40K. So we're not paying mm -hmm. income tax on our corporation because we have so many losses. <laughs> um, but I mean, there's a lot of positive too, but I, the, I could have used that 40,000. I would have been happy to pay 10,000 in income tax and keep that 30k or something yes, exactly so i think that it that it was a big lesson for us was um was property management if you can't find good property management you have to be able to find a plan b um, yes we started our own property management in the in eastern canada just to fix that problem because we were at 70 to 80 percent vacancy yeah and that was a problem that was fixed in about five days of Francois being there. So. so they were sitting there for three months. Oh, no one wants mm -hmm. to rent your places. I put ads up a few days. Everything was rented. We could barely keep up with the, with the demand. The demand. So. so it just shows the importance of your power team. Like there's a lot of bad people out there. It's very sad. I wish I always mm -hmm. try to believe the best in people, but there's a lot of good people though, but you just have to be able to like, find them. Too. And, and when you're <laughs> like with COVID, it was just so complicated. Like just going to Eastern Canada from Ontario for people that know, I mean, you have to apply. You had, well, to you, apply. Have to apply. you had to wait five days to see if you were accepted to go. You had to have a really good reason. And just being a property owner is not enough. It's not a good enough reason. You had to have a really good reason to be able to go there. So that was something that was um, a big problem for us. We couldn't go and, and kick people's butts. <laughs> So, yeah, so that was something that was a bit of a problem. And now that I, that we have kind of our team in place, we have, you know, we know that we can get a plumber, we can get an electrician, we have our contractor, we have a lot of people already in place. We actually have other investors that kind of connected with us and like, Oh, if you guys want us to go look at your properties or anything that live there, give us a call. Anytime. I was like, Oh, I finally feel like, okay, things are getting finally in, settling in, yeah. into place now. But it all started with one bad realtor. So we're not going to name names or anything, but if it starts- <laughs> We're just talking about horror stories. <laughs> it starts with a bad apple. So this, <laughs> this realtor promising these amazing deals, mm -hmm. cash flow from day one, but he just forgets a minor little detail that this house is pretty much a crack house and it's on a bad street with, yeah, like Small tiny, <laughs> tiny little detail and it needs Oh, instead of 40K repairs, probably more like 100, but mm -hmm. they took really good pictures. And the uh, house inspector was probably uh, bought off as well. So like, it's just a bunch of lies and stuff. So that kind of garbage does exist. Be very careful. Ask for references and mm -hmm. do your due diligence. That's our biggest lesson, I would say.
Thanks for listening to The Right Club Podcast and joining our community of real estate investors online at therightclub.com, where the focus is about helping you grow. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks from your hosts, Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi.